presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. They're coming from everywhere in the tri-state area on this hot and steamy Sunday to Great American Ballpark. After winning seven of their last ten, the Cincinnati Reds on Fox Sports Ohio will try to complete a sweep of the Oakland A's coming up next. Hi, hello, and welcome to Cincinnati, everyone, along with the Cowboy Jeff Bradley and Jim Day. I'm George Grant. Well, what a role the Reds are on. We've talked about the offense a lot, but how about three straight quality starts? Well, I think the, the key to it, I think the last few games just show you what pitching can do for you. You get consistent pitching, not only in the starting rotation, but out of the bullpen, and you've gotten great defense to go along with. I think that's the big key. When you've got guys starting, they're able to throw strikes, they're able to move the game along quickly, you get guys playing well behind you. Three straight quality starts. How about John Lamb his last two starts they've been pretty good uh, they really have George he's been aggressive with his fastball and the changeup almost impossible to tell at release point whether it's a changeup or whether it's a fastball unless you see a swing like that then you know it's a changeup when John Lamb is throwing strikes with his off speed stuff and then surprising hitters with the fastball you get those kind of numbers well that's the story of John Lamb the other side of it from an Oakland standpoint just like the Reds they've had a whole host of injuries during the course of the early part of this season the Reds are just starting to get guys back they just lost Rich Hill yeah two smaller market clubs it's not like you can go out and make a huge trade or, or try to sign a free agent when you lose guys that you're expecting to be in your starting rotation especially this many guys well the losses follow Kendall Graveman will get the ball today and while he has not been the best pitcher he's been the most consistent he's taken every start. Yeah he's been able to take every start Sonny Gray along with him but Gray was on the 15 day disabled list. The key for Graveman all comes down to the sinker that ball that runs away from the left handers and into the righties when he's down with that that gives him great effect with the slider if he's up he's going to have a problem. Well like you like to say. Let's get it on, Cowboy. <laughs> J.D. will talk about the starts the Reds have had of late. <laughs>
you by Chevy. Check out their award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good, it's Skyline time. Meteorologist Brandon Orr here from Local 12. You know, yesterday it was hot and humid. We are into the 90s. We're going to be a few degrees shy of that, but whether it's 88 or 90 degrees, it's still hot no matter which way you look at it. We're going to be dry at the start of the game. Can't rule out a stray random pop up shower. They're going to be very isolated. That chance is only through a small window through the middle of the game. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the game here on Fox Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day on a very hot field here at Great American Ballpark, and we've talked so many times about it. It's all about starting pitching. It starts right there, and the Reds winning lately, and you can go back to the starters giving them quality starts. It's their IGS bringing the energy. Last three games, Brandon Finnegan, seven innings pitch, just two earned runs. Anthony DiScofani in his season debut, six innings pitch, one earned run. And yesterday, Dan Straley got through seven again. One earned run, and the Reds have won seven out of ten because of the starting pitching. It starts right there, as we say. John Lamb is the guy that gets the ball today. The lefty goes to the hill as the Reds go for a three-game sweep. George and the Cowboy are coming up next. Ballpark as we await game three of this three game set. The Reds have won the first two. Hot, steamy day, but a very special day for all those young kids, Cowboy. Man, it's a moment that they'll remember for a long, long time. Yeah, well you, you run out on the field on a regular basis and you take it for granted. This is just what you do. But for a youngster, especially those, and some of them look like they're maybe four, five, Maybe a couple of 10 year olds out yep. there, but it's got to be something special and just standing and waiting on the fellas to come on out to the field. Well, whether you're five or 25 years old as John Lamb is marching out to the mound is pretty special. He'll deliver his signature to the youngsters standing on top of the rubber and we're about ready to play baseball here at Great American Ballpark. Let's check the starting lineup for Bob Melvin and the Oakland A's the A's. Struggled during the early part of this season. They've now lost nine straight on the road, seven straight overall. They have won only one game in the month of June. They have not hit a lick. Coco Crisp 
has started the series pretty well with base hits in his first two at bats. He's 0 for 6 in, so 2 for 8 is Coco Crisp. Jed Lowry comes in at 294 with a homer 19 knocked in. Danny Valencia has been one of the league leaders in hitting all year, is in at 338. Chris Davis will be back in the lineup. Butler will get his first start of the series. The former Kansas City Royal power hitter will play first base. Marcus Simeon, the young, outstanding prospect at short. Fegley behind the plate. Smolenski will play right. And Kendall Graveman is your starting pitcher. And there is Bob Melvin. Melvin, of course, a longtime friend of Brian Price. They were together in Arizona when Price was his pitching coach. When he got the job in Oakland, the first guy he wanted was Brian Price. The Reds circumvented that by signing Brian Price to be their manager. They remained very close. They have the great deal of respect for each other. Brian saying he learned a lot about life, not just about managing, from Bob Melvin. Two years in Seattle, two years in Arizona, and now fifth year in Oakland. On the mound for the Reds, the lefty from Southern California, 25 years of age, 6'4", 205, and boy, he's had two great starts back-to-back, -back, Cowboy. Trying to make it three in a row, and one of the first start that got him going happened to be in Colorado, a place not really well known for being any kind of pitcher's paradise <laughs> whatsoever, but the game lamb pitch there, I think, really gave him some confidence and showed up again in his start against the Nationals, and I'm sure the Reds would like to see that show up again here this afternoon. Now, Tom Browning always said, I learned a lot more from the games I lost and the games we lost from the games I won. And I think this team had a turning point. When they had 17 runs scored against them in game two in Colorado, they could have folded up their tents. They've been a different team since then. Lamb delivers strike one to Coco Crisp, who's in at 222 with the five homers and 22 knocked in. Crisp playing center field again today. He started game one in center, game two in left. This one hit high in the air to left. Adam Duval circling under it, and he'll haul it in. Who the ball's carrying here today? It's a launching pad today. That's before we head to Atlanta tonight. <laughs> Here's your Reds for defensive alignment. Adam Duval, Steve Selsky will get his first start in center field. You know that Billy Hamilton still on the seven day concussion list. Jay Bruce, who's homer of the difference in yesterday's game and his defensive play was the key in the night. Suarez, Cozart, Phillips, Votto, and Cabrera behind the plate. That's your four defensive alignment. The Reds still last in the league in defense, but defense has been one of the keys for them in this series. You've watched Selsky the last two spring trainings, and he impresses you at the plate and wherever you put him in the outfield, he's solid. Yeah, he seems to be rather patient as a hitter, confident in his abilities, not jumping at the baseball. We'll see how he does in center field today. Your umpires for today Manny Gonzalez behind the plate CB Buckner at first fielding Culbreth the crew chief at second and Jimmy Reynolds down at third. Two and all oh, there's a barked out strike call Manny Valencia on deck. Lowry now 31 years of age. Comes in with those 19 runs batted in on the season. Predominantly a shortstop throughout the early part of his career. And as it happens to everybody, when you turn 30, you start playing second and third. And he's been pushed over to second by Simeon, the young shortstop. And the A's have a three or four pack of young middle infielders coming up. That's a bloop into right, and that'll drop for a hit. So Lowry gets a base hit. One out and one on. It almost seemed from the first pitch of that at bat that Jed Lowry had made up his mind he was going to hit the ball to the right side of the infield. Trying to cut a fastball in and it just doesn't quite get in enough. Didn't hit it well. But you see a good swing there by Lowry getting his hands inside the baseball. Lowry came in as one of the hottest hitters in this lineup after coming off the disabled list the last week in May. That's his first hit of this series. His average was over 300 when the series started, down to 294. Here's Valencia with nine homers, 23 knocked in. Yeah, the A's are in a similar spot that the Reds found themselves in when they were 
in a losing streak, only hitting 219 on this road trip. They've lost every ball game. When they've gotten some hitting, they haven't gotten good for starting pitching. And when they've got good starting pitching, they haven't gotten any hits which or haven't scored any runs. They got hits off these Scafani. They just didn't get put any runs on the board. Which is similar to what the Reds went through for the better part of two months. One ball, no strikes. That's up and away. John Lamb, of course, one of the three pitchers that came to Cincinnati in the deal with Kansas City for Johnny Cueto last year. We have seen two of those three. I imagine we'll see all three before we get too far along here in this season. Cody Reed would be the third one. All three of them appear to be projected as solid members of this red staff in years to come. And wouldn't that be something? You get three left-handers from one organization for Johnny Cueto. Now, granted, they won the World Series. Mm -hmm. But if all three of those guys pan out as starters over the year, that's going to go down as a great trade for both, both teams. Clubs. They got what they needed. The Reds got what they wanted. That deliveries up high. Three balls and no strikes. I think ultimately when you're when you're making trades like for it to be good for both clubs sooner or later you're going to have to do it again. <laughs> and if you are taking advantage of the guy that's next to you he's not going to want to deal with you next time. Four wide ones and there's the first walk given up by Lamb. maybe spend a little too much time with a runner down at first. So John will take a step off the mound, take a big deep breath, grab the rosin bag, and cowboy, this is one of those days where you need the rosin bag, huh? Yeah, you're going to have a a bit of moisture on not only the your hand, but on your wrist as it comes down into your hand. But I, I look at Lamb right now; he's working a little bit in a slower pace than what he did in those two starts that we showed you earlier. When he's working quickly and throwing strikes, that's when he has his greatest benefit on the man. Davis in with 14 home runs, although he's been in a bit of a homerless drought. In fact, against the Reds, he has a career high eight home runs. That's more than any other team he's played against. Of course, he played for Milwaukee, and he saw the Reds often. That kicks away. One ball and one strike. Davis, one of those guys, you know, when he catches fire, he can almost carry a team for a, a few days. And the A's are waiting for that. American League, he'll D8 some, he'll place left some, and he'll pinch it quite a bit. Just doesn't appear that John Lamb and Cabrera are on the same page. And here we are in the first inning. It's a strike. One and two. Two on, one out. Reds hoping to turn another double play. Double plays have helped them measurably in the series. Four twin killings in the first two games of the series. And it's been significant that when Di Scalfani was in trouble or Straley was in trouble, they got bailed out with twin killings. You guys, think some of those pickoffs to first base, George, with Lowry, were more about trying to get to another sign to the catcher because that time. Lamb spun around to look at Lowry at second. All he really wanted to do was have another sign from Cabrera. Ripped into the seats down the right field line. I guess we expected when the A's came to town, Cowboy, that they would struggle a bit pitching because of all the injuries, especially with Hill going on the DL this week. But we expected to see more hitting. And, and talking with Bob Melvin, I think he has too. Especially with runners in scoring position so far, two for 11 in the series. Hit hard. Five, four. Yes, sir. They turn another one. Wow. 
Lamb gets a great start of the twin killing from Suarez. Phillips turns it, still scoreless, bottom of one. This is a military appreciation day at Great American Ballpark and we want to take a moment to as you scan the ballpark here at Great American Ballpark to send our thoughts love and wishes to all those in Orlando and what has occurred there during the last 24 hours deadliest mass shooting in United States history over 50 people have died and over 50 have been injured. Our thoughts to everyone in the community and our thoughts of solidarity around this great land of ours on this Military Appreciation Day. And you know, whenever you get a color guard to come on the field for the national anthem as we did today, whenever you get an Army, a Navy, an Air Force, a Coast Guard band to do the national anthem, it starts everything off the right way. It's a special feeling, isn't it, Cowboy? Puts a little different feeling in the air. Well, here's Zach. He's in a 285 with nine homers and 25 knocked in. The Reds shortstop has been part of those three of those five key double plays that the Reds have had in this series already. Suarez has started two dandies. The one he started in that inning, Cowboy, probably his best of the series. Yeah, not only a fine job to get to the baseball but to right himself and make a throw right to the chest of Phillips and the mound for this Oakland team is Kendall Graveman he comes in two and six with an ERA of over five not spectacular but he's answered the call for every start on a staff that's been often injured this year The numbers for Graveman. He started out the season throwing the ball quite well. Had a little bit of an oblique issue. He did not miss a start. But he's had a tough time getting that sinker back down in the strike zone. Good hard slider away. Sits usually somewhere between 93 to 95. But the movement on the fastball, in on the righties and away to the left, he sets everything else up. Ozarks battle back from 0 and 2 now 3 and 2. Grave been 25 6 2 over 200 and he's got similar roots to you huh. He does. <laughs> Both ways. Grew up in Alabama. And played at Mississippi State. High in the air right center field crisp going over at the warning track has Ruben hauls it in. Pretty good ride by Cozart with that swing, but Coco catches up with it in right center. Let's check your starting lineup with Votto batting second. Phillips, who had his hitting streak snap yesterday. Jay Bruce, who had the big homer that won the game.
Duval has been miraculous for the Reds the last two months. Suarez Selsky is first start. Cabrera behind the plate and John Lamb who's got a hit on the year. It's in the number nine spot. They'll overshift on Joey at 226 11 homers 35 knocked in. We've seen a couple of balls hit here early George. They were not hit very hard but yet they went all the way to the wall. That indicates to me that the ball is carrying today and I don't think we're going to have a 2 1 ball game. I would concur. There are days when it just feels like there's not a wind blown factor there's an inversion factor that pushes the ball out of here. Got it. And you look at the flags they're not blowing it's just the heat that emanates from the turf all the way up. A ball one strike to Joey. Down low. Votto with those 11 home runs. Sitting on 203. Tied with Eric Davis, ninth on the club's all time list. Juniors next with 210. Locked him up with a breaking ball. And it's two and two. That was not a super snap off breaking ball. It was just a breaking ball that started in the middle of the plate. And as soon as Votto saw the spin, he laid off of it. He was looking fastball. Rocketed down past Freddie Benavides, who's in the Reds' first base coach's box. And as usual, Billy Hatcher sitting in the third base box for Cincinnati. Always smiling. How could you not be when you're at a ballpark, huh? 2 2. Check swing, hanging in there is Votto. Reds will leave after today's game to hit the road. Their road trip begins in Atlanta, goes to Houston, and to Anaheim. Looks like a high change up there. Votto saw it as a fastball, and he started to swing. Ball wasn't there yet. 2 2. They get to two strikes and they break the overshift to the right side, and the shortstop Simeon comes right back almost to his normal position against the left handed hitter. Not many teams do that, but it's smart to do because Joey will go the other way often. And thank you. Well, if the shift was on, it would have been right at the second baseman. So, Votto spoils the anti shift. They sit for Joey. Votto's been having some good early at bats in this series. Like an off speed pitch, backdoor breaking ball, took something off of it. Votto said, Thou shalt not pass. <laughs> one out, one on, and here's Brandon. Phillips 0 for 4 yesterday. That ended his 13 game hitting streak. Jay Bruce on deck, sitting on 14 homers. You can really see Kendall Graveman concentrating on trying to keep that sinker down in the strike zone, but he's missing so low that it's causing him to fall behind in the count. Pretty good breaking ball right there. Now the Reds expected to see a lot of fastballs from Sonny Gray in game one. They ended up seeing a lot of breaking balls. Yes, they did. And it looks like we're getting the same diet here, huh? Appears to be the case here early going. 1 1. In the air to center field. Coco back. Votto goes halfway and he'll retreat to first. Here's your four defensive alignment for the A's in game three of this series. Oakland comes in with an outfield alignment of Davis in left, Crisp in center, Smolinski is your right fielder today, Valencia back to third, Simeon, outstanding young shortstop prospect, gets seemingly better every day, day by day, as Ron Washington continues to work with him. Lowry and Butler on the right side, and Fegley gets his first start of the series. That's your four defensive alignment. 
I think if you were to look at these two teams and they both rank last defensively in their respective leagues and by his own admission I think the manager of the A's Bob Melvin says we're not where we need to be defensively position by position. So they're playing about where they should be. The Reds have underachieved defensively. They're a much better team than they've shown. So far. I, I totally agree. I, I think the Reds are a much better defensive club than what they've shown thus far. But things are starting to turn around. They're starting to turn, turn some double plays with regularity. Hit hard to center, but this is going to stay in the park. So a couple of pretty good hit balls, but nothing to show for it for the Reds. Going to the second, Butler leads it off. We're scoreless. Today's storylines presented by Elk and Elk. The three game opponents on the road trip Atlanta, 18 and 43, fifth in the National League East, Houston, 30 and 34, four games under 500, and Texas, 38 and 24, first in the American League Western Division. That's your road trip, Cowboy. The Braves, they were horrible at home. They've won a few more games of late. This is their last season in the ballpark, the old Olympic. Ballpark. They'll move into the new ballpark next year. Hard to believe it's the last year at yeah. Turner Field. We had Fulton County, then we had Turner Field, and now you've got the new ballpark. Cobb County, is that right? Yeah, just north of Atlanta. And really, it's not an old stadium. No. I mean, 96 was the Olympics. They retrofitted it after that, but now they found that about 70 65 to 70 percent of their season tick holder ticket holders come from north of Atlanta and that's where the new ballpark's going to be just have a tough time getting in and out of that location Billy Butler swing sound like a broken bat he'll go back for a new piece of lumber no balls and two strikes to Butler a one time a starter in Kansas City here in and out of the lineup in Oakland well, that was a fastball right in on the hands of Butler and that that really is the pitch that sets everything up for John Lane. If he can get the ball in with some semblance of regularity it doesn't always have to be the cutter. But you can see where that ball ended up and as it came to the plate the ball looked like it was going to be middle away. And then it just continued with that angle right in on the hands of Billy Butler. At the plate again by Butler. Came right back in there. Butler, a free agent from Kansas City, signed a three year deal in 2015, now 30 years of age. Met the early part of his career in Kansas City, was a fixture there. First round pick back in 2004. Hit hard. Bozart can't get to it, and that's a base hit. Second base hit for. The A's leadoff hitter on here in the second, and here comes 
Simeon the shortstop. Not sure I agreed with that pitch, George. Looked like a cutter that was going to be back door. You've already seen back to back pitches that are coming towards the hitter, and this one does the same. It comes right back over the plate. I think that was one of those times that the change up from John Lamb, he wanted it to tail away, and it just cut right back over the plate. So there is some speed in this lineup. Butler does not represent that speed. You don't expect him to be going at all. <laughs> I don't think so. He's just going to talk with Joey. Yeah, they'll have a good conversation about hitting. <laughs> I mean, he's nearly a 300 hitter for his career, so you know they both love the bat rack. <laughs> Here's Simeon, 11 homers on the season. 25 knocked in. Well, after getting ahead of Butler, quickly he's behind on Simeon 3 0. There's a strike. It. If it's fair, it's trouble. It will be fair and gone. A two run home run for Marcus Simeon, his 12th of the year. Now 27 runs back in, and it's a 2 0 lead for the Oakland A's. That looked like a cutter from John Lamb that he was trying to run in on the hands of Simeon, and it just stayed over the plate. This happens when you get behind in the count. You can't afford to run it way in, so you try to hit the inside corner. And just an inch or two that you leave it on the plate allows him to get the bat head to it. Well, Simeon delivers his 12th round tripper. And Oakland has a lead. 2-0. And here's Fegley, today's catcher. Fegley in at 298. No homers, four knocked in. Josh, another guy, spent a good chunk of the last month on the disabled list, didn't come off till May the 27th. One swing of the bat for the A's, and they score more runs with that swing of the bat than they did in the first 18 innings of this series. Behind in the count catches up to you, doesn't it? Yeah, it just does not appear that Lamb is comfortable because when we saw the the last two starts, he was working quickly, he was aggressive, and it seems like he's a little tentative here today. And this one up a little bit, bang by Fegley into left field, and it's a third straight hit. A single, a homer, and a single. And there's the number eight hitter, Jake Smolinski. Watch where this pitch is when the catcher has to reach up or reach back towards the plate. That's not usually a good sign. Chris Smolinski called up after starting the year in Nashville where he'll play all three outfield positions. Today he's playing right. This one high in the air to center. Back goes Selsky at the wall looking up. It is gone. I'm telling you, George, that Man. ball is carrying today. It just kept carrying. Selsky thought he had a shot at it when the ball left the bat. It just kept going. So two two-run homers here in the second, and Oakland has jumped off to a four-nothing lead. Smolinski's second homer, eight knocked in on the season. Backdoor cutter and it cuts right back over the center of the plate. Now Smuts, Malinsky got good wood on the ball, but that baby just kept going. A curtailed batting practice yesterday, no batting practice today. And after a shortened batting practice yesterday, a lot of the A's were saying, boy, the ball flies out of here, doesn't it? Well, the pitching of Dan Straley sh short circuited that yesterday, but here in the second, those BP home runs have become in game home runs.
Like real estate, huh? Location, location, location. Well, that's what pitching is about. There's a call strike three to Kendall Graveman. And that's the first out of the second inning. And the first strikeout for John Lamb. When you're a pitcher, your thought process should be to disrupt the timing of the batter. If you're thinking that you're going to overpower him, more times than not, you're going to have a problem. Back to the top of the order, Coco Crisp applied to left first time up. In the last year of a five year contract he signed with Oakland. And in the mode that they're in, he's in a similar position, rumor wise, that Jay Bruce is in. And the talk has been for a while that come July, a team that's looking for a solid defender, a guy that can steal a base here or there, he would be on that list. Dribble back over the mound. Phillips has it. There's your second out of the inning. I think the key for Coco Crisp is he's going to have to be hitting better than 222. Seems like yesterday he came up in Cleveland, doesn't it? Oh, 14 years ago. <laughs> Quality of play in center field that was outstanding in those days, and he was an everyday contributor with the running game. Lowry single to right, not this time. Phillips will spear it. But the three straight outs came after two two run homers. Four nothing Oakland. Going for a sweep over the A's. I'm Jim Day. Steve Selsky getting his first major league start today. He'll hit third in this inning. And got his first major league hit. In fact, it was a game that myself and Chris Welsh were doing. And we were kind of joking when they threw that ball aside that, well, they're going to put that ball on the mantle. Well, Steve watched the replay of the game and thought it was pretty funny because Chris Welsh said, well, he's from Southern California. I'm not sure they have a mantle. Put that ball on a surfboard, which he really thought was funny. But he said the funniest thing of all is they do have a fireplace, but it's a fake one. 
pure California. You can't burn wood in it. It's just for aesthetics. <laughs> Still works though. But boy, what a bloodline, huh, Cowboy? <laughs> Not that right. Here's Adam Duval. Suarez and then Selsky will follow. Duval at 264, 17 homers, now 41 knocked in on the season. It's safely in eight of his last nine as he digs in there. And that's a swing and a miss and a strikeout. The first one for Graveman, one away here in the second. Uh, uh, uh. Cowboy, there you go. I don't want all that rabbit food. <laughs> you like barbecue shrimp, not cold shrimp, right? That's right. <laughs> I didn't see any batter on that plate at all. Fried chicken. Suarez broken bat to short, caught in the air, but they'll throw to first in any event. Great job by Simeon. You know how tough that is, Cowboy. How many times have you seen a head of a bat coming at you and the ball? What do you do? I thought Simeon handled that rather well. He picked up the bat and the ball at the same time. The ball did bounce, so he went ahead and threw it on to first. Normally, when that ball is, when that bat at the head is headed your way, you get a lot of shortstops that back up. Now, if that ball had hit the ground and he wasn't able to catch it on a short hop, it would have had some funny spin to it. So the put out goes six to three, two away, and here comes Selsky. One for three, his first major league hit coming this week. Let's go back to Wednesday. Cowboy. Selsky came up Tuesday from Louisville, second stint with the Reds. Made his major league debut. And there's another hit. Take a picture of that scoreboard with the average on it. They <laughs> sit. For Steve, he's been highly regarded by everybody who's worked with him in the minor leagues. Here's another look. If you hit, they will find a place for you to play. And he's hit. I mean, you look at him in the minor leagues, starting, you know, Billings, Dayton, Bakersfield, you know, 281, 348. This one hit the left, going over as Davis can't get it. Here comes Selsky around second. He's going to round third. Billy Hatcher sended him. Here comes the throw. It'll go over the cutoff, man. And how about Ramon Cabrera? A two base hit that plates are run and the Reds are on the board. Supposed to be a sinking fastball, it runs away and. It stays flat, stays up around the middle of the thigh. And a good swing put on that baseball by Ramon Cabrera. Billy Hatcher waving him in. Selsky scores. The Reds are on the board, and here comes John Lamb with two away. Two out RBIs, always the toughest. One for 11 on the season. Base hit here could get the Reds' second run in. With a two-out RBI with your runner at first base, you've really done something special. Raven from the stretch. Hardy on that swing, and it's 0-2. Field, including Graveman, was <laughs> two right steps to the, the dugout. dugout huh? <laughs> it's like they tilted the field. One and two. Fouled off, hanging in there, John Lamb. Now you look at the fastballs that Graveman is throwing here to John Lamb. All of them down in the zone with good sink. 
and it's just being relaxed and getting extension. Those aren't the same pitches that he threw earlier to a couple of guys that were regular players. Tried to put a little bit too much on it. The ball stays up. Out of that strikeout number two for Graveman, the Reds with Ramon Cabrera cashing in an RBI now trail four to one. Run hits the Toyota sign during today's game. Cheyenne Schneider from Cincinnati will win this beautiful new Tundra on display at Great American Ballpark. Register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by seeing your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. Great to have you with us. George Grand, the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley, Jim Day, and our whole crew down in the truck. Brian Hunterman, our producer. Roy Alfers, our director. Jim Day is in the truck. <laughs> if he's smart, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Sigafoos taking care of some highlights for you. Lauren White with some graphics help, and of course our pregame crew at Dream Weaver and Ron Millenor, the whole crew with. Good to see Jeff Picoro back at the ballpark after uh, taking in the Italian festival in <laughs> Kentucky. We didn't think he'd show up today. And Brian Giesenslaw with our pregame festivities. And we'll be back to wrap it up with the postgame story, too. I'm well, trying to get the wheels back on the track as John Lamb as we go to the third. Four straight hits in the second, a single by Butler, homer by Simeon, single by Fegley, homer by Smolinski, and the Oakland A's had four on the board. Fouled at the plate, might have got his foot too. Ouch. Cutter in on his hands. Ooh, right off the top of the foot. On the toe. Been great to see uh, a lot of our old friends from Oakland in town. One of them, of course, uh, Ray Fossey, the great catcher. Mike Aldretti, I used to play with him yeah. in San Francisco. Stanford product. He's in the first base coach's box for yeah. the Oakland A's. I remember this has been years back, but Nolan Ryan asked him, Who are the two toughest hitters that you faced? <laughs> he said, Will Clark and Mike Aldretti. <laughs> And I thought, well, I'm playing with these guys. It's a pretty good compliment right there. I think Mikey blew that up and has it framed in his office at home. I would. Words. <laughs> now, Will Clark belongs on everybody's list. Boy, Will the Thrill. 
Another great college player, Golden Spikes winner. There's his first at ready. First at bat, Will hits a home run off Nolan Ryan at the Astrodome, dead center. That's a pretty good way to start your big league career. <laughs> that, and the guy who's the bench coach for Bob Melvin, Mark Kotze, first at bat, College World Series, a home run. Nice to, way to start that, too. He's on the all time College World Series team out of Cal State Fullerton. You remember a lot of things about that giant clubhouse, but one of the best was Willie Mays would come in all the time, of course, and Will Clark. And they're both great players, but they had the highest pitched highest voices voice. you ever heard, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Big breaking ball. Screechy. <laughs> Not scratchy, yeah. screechy, <laughs> like fingernails on the chalkboard, screechy voice. Three balls, two strikes. Fouled off again by Valencia. But Will could hit, couldn't he? Yeah, he could hit, but he hit probably his best production when it mattered. Mm -hmm. Those two out RBIs we were talking about earlier. He was clutch in the biggest play. Suarez. First out of the third inning, and here comes Chris Davis, who bounced into an inning ending double play in the first. Yeah, I've noticed, George, that after the home run by Sm Smolensky, the pace starting to gradually pick up for John Lamb. And with that, he's retired four in a row. I think sometimes you, you're trying to stay relaxed and make pitches, but when you don't work quickly, that release point tends to get in a different spot and you're not as aggressive. You want to keep your body relaxed, but you want your your middle side to be tenacious. Strike one delivery down and in. I still have a T-shirt that Cal Ripken Sr. gave me when Ray Miller was the pitching coach for the Baltimore Orioles. Work fast, throw strikes, change speeds. Pretty good dictum, huh? Pretty simple. Sounds like it. Two and one. Yes, missing on the outside corner, three and one. If you're John Lamb, when the pitch doesn't go exactly where you need it to be, or you don't get a call that you expect, you can't let that frustration enter into your mind. What you have to do is you have to adjust and move on from it. Because if you let it enter your mind even the slightest amount, then that's going to carry over not only to the hitter you're facing now, but down the road. Full count three two. Center field that's a base hit. But Davis is one for two and here comes Butler who started the rally in the second inning already 58 pitches were in the third inning for John Lane. Fastball four seamer up and right at the mask of the catcher. And for a hitter that's pretty much where you want it. One out, one on. Here's Butler. On a day like this, too, you know, we talked about Denver, how different it was with no humidity, getting a grip on the ball, trying to throw your breaking ball. Isn't this kind of a mental and emotional battle on a hot, humid day to almost rule that out to to fight through it? It is. And on a day like today, that's when you want to work quickly, throw strikes, change speeds, as your t shirt said. But when you're dancing around the zone, and, and this is part of this is not having faced the A's, it's a new ball club.
after the game last night, Dan Straley admitted, I mean, he went seven innings of five hit, one run baseball, and we looked at him and he was taking big deep breaths in the sixth and seventh. He said, I hit the the wall in the sixth, but I had to I had to find a way to get through it. Looped to right. Here comes Bruce. Long run. He won't get there. Rounding the bag at second is Davis, and he'll hold there. There are days on the mound and at the plate where things come easy as we see this ball. Looked like it was hit right off the label of the bat by Billy Butler, but it lands in a perfect spot where Bruce can't quite get to it. There are days that you're going to have where things look and feel great and the game seems easy and then you're going to have days like John Lamb is having right now where you're going to have to push through it. There's a little bit of frustration. And you've got to figure out somehow to keep your team in the ball game and not allow this game to slip away. It's a 4 1 ball game right now. You've got to figure out a way to get through this inning, not allowing another run to score, and give your offense a chance. As we mentioned earlier, the, the ball's carrying today. This is a this is a day where the Reds could catch up with one swing of the bat. But you let it get way out of hand. Trouble. A bit of a pep talk from his pitching coach, Mark Riggins. Riggins will head back. But Butler's two for two. Two on here in the third, and here comes. Simeon who ripped his 12th home run to give the A's a 2 nothing lead last inning. That's a strike. And you know John Lamb's story he had back surgery in December. In addition to that he. Jammed his thumb earlier in the year and had a couple of tweaks so. You're always wondering if maybe the back is acting up maybe the thumb is acting up. O2. Those things, those things, those issues have to be decided before you ever take them out. You go out and you warm up and you're ready to make the start, you got to be ready to play. Oh, they what did a it play. again. Suarez started a 5 4 3 double play in the first. He ends this inning on a 5 4 double play, snaring this liner. Six double play of the series for the Reds. And thanks to two double plays, John Lamb still in the ball game. Another dandy one started by a. Eugenio Suarez, Cowboy. Hey, you got to keep your head on a swivel. You hear that all the time. Suarez catches the ball. He looks to first, but out of the corner of his eye, he sees the base runner off second. That's just a great play and a great 
awareness, just instinctive, catch the ball, know where your base runners are, and you make the play. Great anticipation. Phillips coming to the bag right there at the right time. And they double up the runner at second. So six double plays for the Reds in this series. There's Cozart flied to right first time up. There's a line drive to right that'll drop for a base hit. Leadoff hitter on for the Reds for the first time this afternoon. And here comes Votto. I'm sure Zach is happy to get himself aboard that one for 0 for 15 going into that at bat. Cozart, you face a hitter when he faces a pitcher for the second time around, he's hitting in a 340 clip. I'll take that. Here's Joey, base hit to right his first time up. Ball to the Reds first baseman with Phillips on deck. That's straight. You'd like to believe, George, that those plays like Suarez just made gives you a little bit of life, a little bit of energy on a hot, warm day. Goes on with a leadoff single. Got a chance to do a little damage here. Got the chance to turn the energy of a game around, you want to grab it. Yeah, I mean, it's an emotional roller coaster throughout the game, regardless of who you're playing or, or where you're playing. When you have a little bit of that momentum and that little bit of feel good, you want to take advantage of it. Sometimes it's a you know, play like Holt made in center field yesterday, or play like Bruce made in right field yesterday, or maybe the Suarez play can turn the energy of a game in the other direction. Yeah, the the success in sports never revolves around woe is me. <laughs> You're right. As your father told you every day, right? Right. On the corner, that's a strike three and two. That's where the old saying. Suck it Suck up. It up. <laughs> Dancing around the strike zone, nipping at the corners, Graveman, and we're in a 3 2 count. Devato. Cozart, short lead. Let's see if he'll be going. He's off and going. Here's a swing and a miss. Throw in the dirt, but they get him at second, anyways. Nice job by the shortstop, Simeon, to take the short hop. Now they put the hitter in motion. Votto strikes out. The runner thrown out. The base runner races two away. That throw from Josh Fegley almost hit Kendall Graveman right in the head. Cozart tries to pull his hand back and reach for the bag. If you're Kendall Graveman, you got to get out of the way. Brian Price looked behind him to see if there was a chance to challenge that. No challenge by the Reds. And it didn't look like, I mean, it was very close because he missed him with the initial swipe. And it looked like he still got the tag on the body before he got the hand on the bag. Watch Graveman here. That ball went right over the top of his head. And he's like, <laughs> hey now. Johnny Bench did that to a few guys, huh? There's Phillips fly to center first time up. That'll bloop its way into right for a base hit. So the red second hit of the inning, but the strike him out, throw him out, double play leaves him with two outs and a runner on.
MLB.tv Premium number one live streaming sports service delivers everything you've come to expect and a whole lot more. Watch every out of market game live in HD over 400 supported devices are part of the package includes a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB.tv for details. Here's Jay. He also hit one of the warning track in center his first time up. Now we talk a lot about Coors Field and Atlanta the old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium that they used to call the launching pad. But in a ballpark like this there's a pop up heading towards the seats and it'll be out of play. And we went to Denver. And you always know that they hit home runs there, but the Reds have hit more home runs at home than the Rockies have hit at home. So you're a couple of base hits, you know, as Bob Prince used to say, a bloop and a blast away from turning this game around. Yeah, that's why I was talking earlier about Lamb gathering himself and making pitches. You just don't want to get the game, let the game get out of hand. You give the hitters just some semblance of hope. They've got a chance to come back in this ball game. Ball and a strike to Jay. Plus, I think it allows you, if you keep the game close, it allows you offensively to put some pressure on the opposing pitcher when you get some runners aboard, whether it's with nobody out or with two outs because of the way the ball is carrying today. Raven peers in for his sign from Fegley. Here's the 2-2 to Bruce that'll toss over to first. Jay yesterday his third career homer against Oakland 14th of this year that clips the outside corner Jay said it was low it was away doesn't get the call so the Reds strand another runner they still trail four to one. On TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. Download the app and take Fox Sports Ohio and Reds Baseball with you wherever you go. It's a hot, steaming one here at Great American Ballpark today. Temperature in the 90s, humidity high. Reds trying to complete a three game sweep of Oakland. They've got some work to do to do it. 
First pitch swinging foul ball down the right field line and out of play by Josh Fegley and a nice catch. Good job. Had some good catches yesterday in the stands, didn't we? Yes, we did. And of course, after today's game, there'll be over 300 fans playing catch on the field. Family catch day today. That's part of the community funds continued effort to not just promote baseball, but make everything in Reds country just a little bit better. Now we talked yesterday, Cowboy, about what Kim Nuxall's done out at the Miracle Field out in Fairfield. I mean, that's been re remarkable what they've done in honor of Joe Nuxall. That's down and in for a ball. Three and one. Yeah, I think that the fact that the Reds Community Fund has continued to to redo places where kids can have the opportunity to play baseball. There's a walk to Fegley who single last time up. <laughs> so far so good on this hot day with the little guy. He's already starting to lean on daddy a little bit. Here's Smolinski after Fegley singled in the second. Smolinski clubbed his second home run. This one sliced down the right field line. It'll be out of play too. I, I'm not sure that. I think looking at that little boy with his dad, I, what I could tell reading his lips is, "Daddy, you said ice cream." Ice in the cream. Third <laughs> inning. Ice cream in the third inning. For you, you went the odd innings, one, three, five, seven, and nine for ice cream, right? <laughs> They've ever thought about ice cream delivery. Home delivery. Oh, back in the old days they did that. Yeah, I remember. The, I mean, the, when the milkman used to come to your house, they bring the milk and the cream and those big glass bottles. You had that, didn't yeah, you? Because everything now is about convenience. Yep. Yeah. I think that was the first job I ever had. We had a bunch of dogs on our route, and the milkman said, "How about if you come along with me and..." I'll give you an ice cream at the end of the route. Well, I always got the places. Here's the delivery that's skied in the right field. Bruce will saunter in and haul it in. There's your first out of the fourth. And lo and behold, every place he gave me to deliver the milk was where the dogs were. <laughs> that's good. He didn't want to do it. <laughs> well, I got an ice cream out of it, anyways. Torn pants leg. Yeah. But I knew all the dogs, so it was okay for me. There you go. He was smart. Let's see if Kendall Graveman can bunt. Oakland pitchers are 0 for 2016 so far. And have not gotten the sacrifice down until yesterday. There's a foul ball for strike one. Until this series when Sonny Gray sacrificed in the first game of the series. Sonny made it look easy. Yeah. I mean, you could tell it's like watching Finnegan. Finnegan's a ball player. He gets it down. Vado bobbles, so he'll only get the out at first. He was thinking second all the time and trying to turn his body, but it bounced off the glove, so it's the second sacrifice of the series for Oakland. They got a runner in scoring position with two away. Well, if you if you don't aggressively approach the ball the way Votto does, you'll never have a play at second. And there are going to be occasional times where you come in and you're aggressive and the ball hits the edge of the glove or pops out as that one did there. Well then you go on and you just get the runner at first. You can always do that. But if you're not aggressively approaching the ball you will never cut down the runner at second base. And that's ultimately why you're rushing in. So Fegley who let off with a walk is now at second two away and here's Coco Chris fly to left and bounced to second.
Amdum fouled off. And it's one and one. That's Lamb's goal. Get the ball in, make the hitter speed up the bat, pull it foul, and back away with something off speed. Down to third, backhanded, long throw by Suarez. What a gun! Wow. Flashes of brilliance. He's been aces today. Suarez started to double plays and guns down the runner. Reds trying to catch the A's. Rysel Iglesias last night at Pensacola. It was a good first rehab out. He went two innings, a couple of hits, no runs, didn't walk a batter, and struck out two. 22 of his 30 pitches were strikes. Brian Price says his fastball was in the 93 to 96 mile per hour range. Full through a full mix of pitches, was even spotting that curveball. And he needs to build up that arm conditioning, even though he's been a reliever for the Cuban national team. He's got to get used to pitching back to back days. So that'll be the next step to get him back to back days, maybe even three in a row and working multiple innings and getting used to coming out of that pen because since he's been a red, he has been working as a starter. Thanks, JD. So Lorenzen and Iglesias both on their way back to the bullpen. That's good news. And hopefully Homer Bailey will follow into the starting rotation soon as well. Here's Duval struck out swinging first time up off the end of the bat. Here's the race to first, and they'll beat him by a step. College baseball activity. Adam Duval's Louisville Ball Club leading Santa Barbara today three to nothing. After losing game one last night, they piled up 10 hits already. They're in the bottom of the eighth inning with UCSB, the home team today, down at Patterson. McKay is homer in his sixth of the year. So, all goes the way it looks like it's going. They'll be tied 1 1, go to game number three of that series down in Louisville. One away here, Suarez bounced. To short first time up. And Selsky will follow. Kendall Graveman seemed like he was feeling for the strike zone and for the fastball early. He is starting to come around a little bit. That last slider that he threw to Adam Duvall had some serious bite to it. When you're running fastballs in and you can get that slider in the corner, oh boy. Now you grew up pitching in weather like this. Some pitchers, you know, that grew up in northern parts of the country or even southern California where you have less humidity, they don't like it. I, I love you. it. Yeah. This feels like one of those doubleheader Legion baseball days, doesn't it? <laughs> so 
Well, it's it's awfully easy to get loose in this type of atmosphere with the weather the way it is. You don't get tight when you come in and sit on the bench. Kind of this is the kind of weather baseball was meant to be played in. Two and two. It definitely was not made to be played in that candlestick weather with the wind blowing about 20 miles an hour and the temperature at 50 degrees in July. Full count three two to Suarez. As ball four, the Reds get a base runner as we're in the seventh spot in the lineup. Here comes Selsky who singled his first time up. They celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 76 World Series champions with the 76 replica ring ticket package for just thirty dollars. Get your game ticket and an exclusive 76 World Series replica ring plus arrive early for a special pregame on field ceremony featuring members of the Big Red Machine. Packages are limited so hurry up visit Reds.com slash theme. Well it's going to be great when the Reds come home after this upcoming road trip the Pete Rose weekend. The Celebration of the 76 championship team and yeah, a lot of memories here when the, the two times that these two teams have met in the World Series 72 Oakland won a seven game series winning it here in Cincinnati game seven and the Reds of course swept Oakland four straight winning it in Oakland here's Steve single now two for three since coming back from Louisville. Jim mentioned the first hit and what he did with the baseball and Cowboy this guy comes from good bloodlines and his dad was a minor league player his mom was a great athlete his wife they met at Arizona she's an outstanding volleyball player too. So now he's got some cred huh. <laughs> I'm not real happy about Arizona. Yeah I know I watched last night too. <laughs> Swing and a miss 0 and 2. I did not anticipate being two and out. Mississippi State had a lead four to nothing and then Arizona rallied wanted in extra innings winning two straight against Mississippi State but hey well you packed it in down there fans they're great fans twenty seven right at twenty seven thousand for two ball games pretty good college baseball crowd Selsky hanging in fouls it off 0 and two. And they're building a new facility down there, aren't they? Most fifty million dollar stadium. You know, I, I really like what I'm seeing from Selsky right now. There are a lot of kids that come up and they swing at every single pitch that comes to the plate, thinking that they've got to get a hit. And he may not get a hit here, but he looks balanced. He looks confident. Just off the plate, one and two. Probably might not want to take that one again. Almost identical to the one he just fouled off. I don't think Gonzalez will miss that one next time. He got it. And on the hands, a strike out. So. Fifth strikeout for Graveman here in the fourth inning. Two away, and that'll bring up Cabrera, who doubled in the Reds' run back in the second. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. And that pit, that last pitch to Selsky looked like a backup slider, like a slider that came out of the hand a bit early and just spins up and in. And for a hitter, George, you're expecting the ball. If it starts, and you can see this is a slider that he wraps, gets his fingers around, you're looking for that ball to break back towards the catcher's mitt and not to continue spinning towards you. And you judge your swing accordingly. When that ball comes the other way and it's spinning like a slider and it moves like a sinker, that's what happens. Sometimes the right pitch bad results sometimes the wrong pitch good results. There you go. 
There's Cabrera, the switch hitter, double to left. Chase Toma run. There's a base hit into the right field corner. Rounding second, going to third is Suarez. It'll be first and third. Two away, but again, the pitcher spot is due up. We'll see if Brian Price will make a move, and he will. John Lamb was in the on deck circle, but with the Reds trailing by three, first and third, two outs. Here comes Kyle Waldrop out of the dugout to pinch hit. Looked like a changeup that had a little bit too much velocity on it. Stayed up enough for Cabrera to be able to get not a solid bat head swing to it, but he got enough of the bat on the ball to rip it into right field. Here comes Waldrop called up again from Louisville as a pinch hitter two for five this season. Trying to give the Reds a jolt here in the fourth. I, you're the manager Cowboy. You, if you had a starter that was on his game looked like he was in control. You might hang with him here right. early in this game. But I think right now for what Brian Price is thinking. All right. We're down by three. If we could possibly just get one run here. You have two outs, but you're just trying to chip away and get back in this ball game. And Lamb had 77 pitches in his four innings of work, so I'm, you know, maybe get another inning out of him, and that might be it. Oh, so Waldrop. John not happy with the results of today's day. Swing and a miss, two and one. Reds have Waldrop left handed off the bench. And of course, Tucker Barnhart, the switch hitter, is available today. Yvonne de Jesus, Tyler Holt, Pacheco from the right side. Slap past the first base coach's box, and it'll even out two balls, two strikes. Watch Selsky, the youngster. He's more of a left center to right center type of hitter. And when you watch Kyle Waldrop, he is. I'm going to take anything that I can get the bat head on and try to jerk it down the right field line. There's one the other way, but in the seats. Good adjustment to that pitch away. Oh, no kid. Saturday against the Nationals. He pinch hit and singled off Blake Trinan. That gave him his first major league hit in this homestand. So he and Selsky both have a baseball that they'll cherish. He love another one right here. And his at bat against Trinan was a good one. Up and away will go full three and two. I have some of those keepsake balls myself, George. And Every time you see them, it's not like you go in there and look at them every day, but when you do see them or somebody's at the house and they want to see what you have, it, those memories become vivid immediately. It, you just, it just takes you back to when you're 22 years old. 3 2 ball, four bases loaded. Good at bat, fouled off two tough pitches. The Reds have the bases loaded, and here comes Kozar to the top of the order. Melvin getting a little inchy in you know, his it's dugout. It's interesting in that at bat, George, after Wildbrook fouled the ball off hard down the left field line, Graveman no longer stayed on the plate with the fastball. He started it on the outside corner, thinking that Waldrop would chase it, and he did not. Very good at bat for a young hitter. Here's Zach singled his last time up. One for two. Big swing here, and the Reds are right back in this one. He's been pounding him down and in all day long today. Strike one. A walk to Suarez, a single by Cabrera, and a walk to Waldrip have loaded the bases for the Reds. Coming in there again. Down and in, misses one and one.
Zach over 300 with runners in scoring position. The Reds have eight different players over 300 in that category this year. Uh, dribbler down to second. And that'll do it. So the Reds will strand three. And they'll stay three runs down. 4-1 Oakland leads it. Sports Ohio being brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford go further. By Cincinnati Children's ranking third in the country on United States News Best Children's Hospitals. And by Jack Link's Jerky. Wishing you a wild and happy National Jerky Day. Time for our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Today's greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile to give you an update. Robert Stevenson at Louisville. Solid improvement start by start 11 starts four and three record an ERA of just over three with 50 strikeouts Cody Reed at Louisville 10 starts similar numbers five and three a three point three eight earn run average and 58 strikeouts Amir Gara on the way up the road Garrett has 11 starts and a five and three record as well from the offensive side Jesse Winker at Louisville a couple of homers 24 knocked in in 54 games and a solid 288 average and you know it's, it's very clear Cowboy that there is strong pitching help up the pipeline on its way to Great American Ballpark. Yeah, I think you look at the starts from Amir Garrett now he's in double A but I believe if you can dominate in double A you can pitch up here mm -hmm. and he has dominated and Jesse Winker is starting to hit the ball with more consistency now after a little bit of lull right there in the middle of May. Jed Lowry fly ball to center against the new pitcher for the Reds Josh Smith and talk about a guy who made his way through the minors as a starter. Came up last year started some but he's found a niche in his bullpen he's looked pretty good of late. Yeah I think sometimes for young pitchers they get to the big leagues they try to save energy for the fifth or the sixth inning and, and you don't quite become as aggressive early in the ball game. I think the bullpen fits this kid perfectly. There's Danny Valencia walked and bounced out. Would you put uh, Michael Lorenzen in that same category. I don't know that I would I would categorize him in that spot now but there there's no doubt that Lorenzen has the stuff to be your closer right now. Down the right field line long run Votto but it'll hit the tarp. When you, you've got two guys that the Reds are going to place in the bullpen when they come back and Rice Iglesias and Michael Lorenzen. What that does in my estimation is it finishes your last three innings of the ball game with consistency. Uh, the, you don't have to worry so much about it. You can bring Iglesias in. He can pitch a couple of innings. You close with Lorenzen. And then you you worry about tomorrow when it comes. One ball one strike to Valencia. That misses on the outside corner. I think ultimately when you put a guy in the bullpen 
the first question is, okay, how often can I use him? Can he bounce back? And can I use him two days in a row? Can I use him three days in a row? You know, and you don't know until you do it. I mean, Caleb Cotham is a great example of that. Throughout his minor league career and his short time with the Yankees, never pitched two days in a row. Never pitched back to back. Never. Very seldom, like twice in his whole career. And you don't know that until you go through it. Yeah, he had some shoulder issues early in his career with the Yankees, so they never really pushed the envelope with him. And there are two sides of it. Number one, how do you use him? But number two. As the pitcher, you have to learn how can I do that? How do I get myself to that point? To learn how to warm up, you have to learn how to take care of your body. But if you're going to pitch in a major league bullpen, you need to be able to throw at, at the minimum back to back days, and you really need to learn how to throw three days in a row. And, and when I say three days in a row, I'm talking about one inning at a time. Now if you pitch two innings or two plus, yeah, you get you get days off. I remember when you came up in San Francisco that was your goal at the end of spring training to to go three in a row so that you knew you were ready exactly. Swing and a miss good job by Josh there's your second out of the inning. Good slider from. Josh Smith down and away. And all of that, that pitch there was set up by that first pitch fastball right on the outside corner. When the hitter knows that you can hit it, you start the slider just on the edge of the plate and they've got to chase. Well, a big dark cloud coming over the ballpark, and there's some big raindrops dropping right now, too. Not raining, it's just like one drop at a time. Big swing by Davis, who bounced into a double play and singled the center. Two away here in the fifth. For the A's, four runs, seven hits, no errors, three left. A run, six hits for the Reds, but six left on base. Two two run home runs have fueled the Oakland offense. Big swing and a foul ball way up to the second deck behind home plate. Yeah, you you watch Chris Davis swing, and it reminds you of a softball hitter trying to hit the ball into the second deck. He stands straight up, holds his hands right about the letters, and yet when the ball comes, that front left foot is heading towards third base. That's why he can't hit that pitch. Good spot. Two strikeouts. Good inning for Josh Smith. Reds go back to work. Here comes Votto.
fantastic historic weekend June the 24th through the 26th at Great American Ballpark when the Reds honor Pete by inducting him into the Reds Hall of Fame Sunday June 26 join the Reds in retiring the hit Kings number 14 for tickets call 513 381 Reds or visit Reds.com. What a great weekend that's going to be Rick Walls and everybody at the Hall of Fame. They put together a tremendous weekend. The ceremony is always one of the best in all of baseball, and it'll be great to honor the Hit King, number 14. Here's Joey. He's the Reds' version of Hit King in this new era. Single his first time up and struck out as part of a double play. He struck out, and after Cozart had singled, Cozart was out trying to steal second and strike him out. Double play, throw him out. One ball, one strike. Hit hard, even against the shift. He still bangs it into right for a base hit. So the leadoff hitter's on for the Reds here in the fifth, and here comes Brandon. Growing up, what do you remember most about Pete Rose? The slide. Yeah. And in the third, the, the flying the slide. Head, the head first <laughs> slide. You know. You were a shortstop. So, I mean, you were a, a you weren't a home run hitter, you were a singles hitter. You I kinda, just like the grit. Yeah. You know, the, the football mentality, playing the game of baseball, and just the competitive aspect. And so many times you watch Pete at the plate, balls in, out, up, down, he's fouling pitches off, and I mean just the grimace and the grind in his face. I mean that just that just does it. Bob Melvin has made his move to the mound. That'll be it for Kendall Graveman. He'll exit with a 4-1 lead. To the bullpen we go. Our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. You're watching Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. It's part of our Lowe's home field advantage numbers of the day. Our producer Brian Hunterman got on his abacus and looked for some stats that other people might not find. And guess what? Only three, only one team with three players on the roster, each with 100 or more homers at the home ballpark as a member of the team. And the Reds are the only team with those three players Bruce 131, Phillips 113, and Joey 111. Those fellas have been playing together a long time. Here's Fernando Rodriguez. He'll take over against Phillips. Phillips a line drive to center, but it's right at Coco Crisp. He hit it right on the button, but right at Crisp. So there's your first out of the inning. Bob Melvin didn't waste any time. It's not about getting a win for Kendall Graveman. It's about getting a win, period, for a team that's lost seven straight and nine straight on the road. Here's the very effective Fernando Rodriguez. Yeah, the two walks in the fourth inning. Starting to lose it a little bit. Lead off base hit by Vado. And the bullpen has really been a strength of this athletics ball club. There's Jay. 
fly to center and struck out looking. And you add that to the fact that Rodriguez in his last seven ball games, he's only allowed one earned run. He's been very tough on right handers. They hit only 100 against him, but left handers over 300 on the season. And usually when he comes in, it's for more than just an inning or a batter or two. He'll be a two inning pitcher, so he's probably going to bridge it for a couple of innings. Unless the Reds can change that plan. Here's Jay sitting on 14 homers. Hit hard, but right at the shortstop. Simeon will tap the bag and turn it into two on a nice pick by Butler down at first. It didn't take many pitches for Rodriguez to end the Reds' rally. Still 4 1 open to the six. Mostly great pitching that have been the story of the first two games. Here it's long ball. In the second, Butler singles. Simeon homers 2 0 Oakland. Then Josh Fegley singled the left. And Jake Smolinski followed with only his second homer of the year over Selsky's head. It's 2 0. The Oakland A's had a big lead early. The Reds bounce back with a big swing of their own. Ramon Cabrera doubled. Chasing home Selsky, that's the lone run that the Reds have. It's a 4-1 ball game. Reds have stranded six through the first five, and we go back to work in the sixth. Butler leads it off. Guy Smith had a clean fifth. Fly ball and two strikeouts. There's Butler's two for two, his first start of the series. He's a career hitter around 300. Huh? He had at least two or three 300 seasons with Kansas City. Selsky stops now, tries to collect. It's over his head all the way to the wall, and Butler will have his third hit. Hit right at him, and Selsky got frozen off the bat. That one step delay allowed the ball to sail over his head for a two base hit. The leadoff hitters in scoring position. Misjudge this one. Toughest ball for a center fielder is that ball that's hit right at you. And that one was hit right at Selsky. You see the difference that one stutter step frozen. You give him the two steps and that's a caught ball. So it'll go as a double. Lead off hitter at second and here's Simeon who's got a homer. And lined into a double play Alonzo will come in and pitch run for him. Yonder. Former Cincinnati Red. This may be the first time in his career he's pitch run, Cowboy. I would say you're correct. <laughs> but I would bet he's faster than the other guy. Yep. You know, you always watched it when he was with the Reds. Not a lot of speed. He always got a good secondary lead. You know, maybe I should say, he, maybe I should put it this way. Instead of saying he's faster than the other guy, he's not as slow as the other guy. That's a good way to put it. Yonder's had a couple of hits in this series already. Red's trying to keep him close with Simeon at the plate. And 
you got to figure the bunt effort by Simeon was one more of his own to square and just to try to draw the third baseman in. Simeon, good handler of the bat. The homer is 12th of the year. That's a straight two and one. He joined us late, John Lamb, four innings, seven hits and four runs. He allowed the two home runs. 77 pitches. He was lifted for a pinch hitter. Never really got into a group. Had base runners every inning to deal with. High in the air to right. Here comes Bruce. Long run. He'll get there. Alonzo tagging, but he's going nowhere. Bruce's throw right on the money to third. Improve your game and tune into the golf zone. Our PGA pro Jimmy Hamlin shows you terrific tips to lower your handicap and talks with you about every weekend's tournament. Get inside the golf zone with Jimmy Hamlin, presented by American Eagle Mortgage and Varmint Guard. Sunday at 8 on Fox Sports Ohio. Playing a golf in Atlanta? I am not. Uh, that's Mama's coming in. Ah, that's good. Spend some time with Ash. Got it. That'll be neat. One away. Here's Begley. A base hit and a walk. Been on twice. Reds play the infield pretty much straight away. This one. High fly ball to right. Alonzo's tagging. Bruce at the warning track, and Alonzo will advance to third easily this time. Put two away, runner at third, and here's Smolinski. The club his second homer of the year, picked up his seventh and eighth runs batted in of the year. Very versatile outfielder down at Nashville, which is now their triple A team. Still seems strange to say Nashville is the triple A team of the Oakland A's. He played all three outfield positions. You got to plan a little bit ahead of time if you're going to call somebody up for that day's game. It's not like they can drive up from Louisville as the Reds have. The Reds have been blessed with Indianapolis and Louisville as their AAA affiliate. Uh, you can get somebody here pronto. By the way, Louisville did defeat Santa Barbara today, three to nothing after losing five three yesterday. So that best of three. Super Regional Series tied at one. Game three tomorrow. Just like at Mississippi State, they had great crowds the last two days there. One ball, one strike. What's the difference in the Josh Smith we see today and the one we saw come up last year? Aggressiveness in the zone. Does not look nearly as tentative or trying to make perfect pitches as he did when he was starting. He's just going hard. He's going right at every batter that comes to the plate. And that's what you want out of the bullpen. And that's really what you want from any of your pitchers. Balls, two strikes. Lonzo off third, infield straight away, outfield pulled a step towards left. Got him. Got him out. Three strikeouts, two innings of work for Josh Smith. Nice job. Reds looking for runs, trailing 4 1.
of the day Josh Smith boy two great innings Cowboy he was outstanding very aggressive in the zone even with the misplay in center field he came back got three consecutive outs and stranded the runner at third base by the way we just got a correction we beg your pardon but we were given a score of three to nothing the Louisville game the end result of the Louisville game they lose it four to three in the ninth inning UCSB scores four runs on a walk off grand slam home run so Louisville not winning in game two UCSB wins it four to three a stunning defeat and Cowboy what a difficult ending for a team that had a, just a tremendous year this year. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing looking throughout college baseball at these super regionals. The number one seeds or the higher the national seeds are having the most difficult of times. It's a testament I guess to the parity in college baseball too. Yeah well it just tells you about the game. We, we see it up here on a daily basis but it, it resonates in college baseball too. That's why you play the games every day that you suit up you've got a chance to win. So the final today the Gachos University of California Santa Barbara four Louisville three UCSB won yesterday five to three so Louisville eliminated losing the first two of the best of three series. That got him on the arm. Well, Suarez with one out will march down to first and that'll bring up Selsky. Like Rodriguez was trying to run this ball in on the hands of Suarez and it just took off. Got a run around. Let's see if Selsky can make something of it. Steve singled in the second, struck out in the fourth. That pitch is up high. Reds have left six on already through five, trying to convert here in the sixth. Both starters are gone. Kendall Graveman, four innings of seven hit, one run baseball. John Lamb, four innings of seven hit, four run baseball. That's up high at 92, and Fegley will go out and talk to his right hander. Hey, Reds fans, be part of history June 24th through the 26th when Pete Rose is inducted into the Reds Hall of Fame. Saturday, the 25th, arrive early for a pregame on field ceremony, receive a commemorative Pete Rose poster presented by Yucatan Guacamole. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS or visit reds.com. Hope you come down to downtown Cincinnati and be part of a great weekend. High fastball swing and a miss. Two and one. Now that's the one bad swing I've seen from Selsky. You're looking for a 2 0 fastball, and you get a fastball up and out of the strike zone. That's the part about being in the big leagues. You have to look in one spot. If it's not there, you don't swing. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball, and it's 2 and 2. Good hard tight slider. But you allow her, Rodriguez to go back to that after you swing at a pitch on, that should be running the count to three and oh. So here we go three two Selsky steps out takes a look at Hatcher. The runner Suarez down at first. Reds already burned by a strike amount throw amount double play once today. Suarez short lead. Not going. Hit hard, but right at the shortstop. 
They'll get one at second on to first and they'll turn a double double play. Well the Reds have made the double play so effective in this series but today it's been Oakland double plays that keep them in a three run lead. Reds Live, the pregame show. Everything you need to know. Get ready for that day or night's game is presented by Ray St. Clair Roofie. After the game, the Reds are off to hot Atlanta, and it's a four game set there. Daniel Wright will indeed take the start from Alfredo Simon. Simon now in the bullpen. Wright will get another start, followed by Finnegan, Di Sclafani, and Straley. They'll face Blair, Tehran, Norris, and Whistler. We're on the air for all four games in Atlanta, and indeed it is hot Atlanta, Georgian Cowboy. <laughs> 90 plus might even be a heat index over 100 degrees. Well, that heat index is definitely over 100. You can book that. What do you think, JD? Could we invoke the Gordy Coleman rule with the golf shirts down there? I'd like to invoke the Jim Day rule <laughs> shorts as well. <laughs> How would that go over? Probably not well. Uh, we'll get a shot of that if you do it. Yeah, you know especially that. <laughs> of my white, ugly legs. Really pale legs. Here's right AJ now. Morris. He'll take over Josh Smith. Two solid innings, two strikeouts in the fifth, another strikeout in the sixth. Morris will take over. And here comes Butler to pinch hit in the pitcher spot. As we start the top of the seventh, Butler started one game, great speed, and a better than average bunter. Not a great bunter with his speed. The speed is comparable to Billy Hamilton. Not Billy Hamilton's speed, but if he gets on, he's got tremendous base running ability. Overall, at 248. One ball, one strike. So the switch hitter burns to the plate. That slap foul. They still have some power left on the bench. Tyler Holt will enter the game for the Reds. In center field. That slap foul. The pitcher spot due up second, so you figure that Holt would be in the number nine spot in the order. And Selsky exits in the seventh spot. That's where Morris will enter. One ball, two strikes. Suarez. And Burns is retired, so the switch hitter retired. Vote is still available on the bench. So is Muncie, two left handed swingers. And Langendorf as well, the right hander on the bench. One away, here's Coco Crisp, top of the order. Crisp 0 for 3. 
robbed of a hit on a nice play by Suarez in the fourth inning. Well, in addition to the UCSB win over Louisville four to three, there's a bouncer off the glove of Morris. Phillips has it. Two away, two quick outs for the Reds right hander. Miami's leading Boston College nine to three. They're now in the seventh. BC beat Miami in game one yesterday. All trying to head to Omaha. What do you remember most about the moments that you talk about sharing a baseball and thinking back on great moments? Just going to Omaha is special, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is, George, especially at that age. It, that, that first time when you walk into the stadium. Old Rose and Black. It, it's kind of like being a big leaguer and walking into old Yankee Stadium mm -hmm. or walking into Fenway or Wrigley. You realize. This is what it's all about. This is where big leaguers have been for decades. Except with this in that level, it's the college players. Your Mississippi State team, I mean, it had a great year, but I mean, I can't think of another team that had as many people that were successful. Here's a line drive right center field. It'll hit turf. And Holt. Got to play it second. Here comes the throw. What a throw! They got him. <laughs> Tyler Holt saved the game yesterday with a great catch, and he shows you how he could play center field with a great throw. Tremendous effort by Holt. It's a one-two-three. Another look, Cowboy. The ball gets by Jay Bruce. Holt spins and throws a dart. To second base, a perfect hop, nice play by Cozart, and Jed Lowry's got to be thinking, what just happened here? Who served to protect in our local police Great and fire department? For the Reds, trying to keep time. it close. Please help us honor these brave men and women, and all our veterans of service, and welcome musician second class Laura Carey as she leads us in the singing of "God Bless America." God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the
players in the world converge on the historic Oakmont Country Club for the 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday on FS1, continues through the final round on Sunday on Fox, or you can watch it all live on Fox Sports Go. Tyler Holt, a brilliant play to rob Jed Lowry of a possible double. And the Reds will try to go to work in the bottom of seven. Three more cracks at this Oakland bullpen. Here's John Axford, his second appearance of the series. Axford, the veteran right hander, faced the Reds often during his days in Milwaukee. He'll face Cabrera, then Holt, then top of the order, Cozart. It's pretty good in his ball game the other night for Oakland, but. Axford in this ballpark. I'm sure he'll be ready to leave when it's time for this game to be over. It has not been pretty for him in his career here at Great American Ballpark. One ball delivery. Axford yesterday struck out Duval, walked Suarez, then struck out Holt and Barnhart in a strong eighth inning. Axford, one of those types of pitchers, big tall fella. Good firm fastball. You've got to make him get the ball down. Cabrera today, two for two, doubled in the Reds' run back in the second. With two outs, Selsky singled, Cabrera doubled, and the Reds were on the board. They trailed four to one at that point. That's where we still are. In the fourth, he singled to put runners at first and third for the Reds. And then Waldrop, the pinch hitter, walked to load the bases for the Reds in the fourth, but Cozart grounded out. Two two. Popped up left side. Valencia there, he'll glove it, and there's one away. There comes Tyler before he gets to swing the bat. Let's go back to yesterday. A great catch that really proved to be a game saver, Cowboy. Laid out, this was with the bases loaded. Got a great jump on the ball and made a fine play. And how about this play? Tyler Holt, one of those types of players that he's thinking, I dare you to take the next base. I dare you to do it. Pivot. And a rocket blind fire right on the money. And a great pick by Cozart on the short hop, too. And they nailed Jed Lowry at second. This one, one hop, flagged down at first. Alonzo makes the play, and there's two outs. So, two quick outs for John Axford here in the seventh. I just like the way Tyler Holt plays the yep. game. Energy. I like the way he plays the game. Everybody leads in different ways. Some players lead vocally. Some players lead by the way they hit. Some players lead by the way they pitch. And some players give you energy, whether it's at the plate or in the field. Holt always does that. Hop up by Cozart. It'll be snared by Simeon. So an easy inning for Axford. Oakland still leads 4-1.
Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Reds, of course, hit the road after today, heading to Atlanta first and then against the West. But they'll be home and don't forget Reds fans be a part of a historic weekend June the 24th through the 26th here at Great American when the Reds honor Pete by inducting him into the Reds Hall of Fame Sunday June 26 join the Reds in retiring the hit Kings number 14 for tickets call 51338 run Reds or visit Reds.com. Four runs nine hits no errors four left for Oakland one seven and oh six left on base for the Reds twenty four thousand eight hundred eighty here in a hot in steamy Great American Ballpark for the final of this three game set. Here's Valencia walked bounce out and struck out. John Lamb started four innings. 77 pitches he allowed seven hits and four runs struck out one walk two. Two two run home runs in the second. He never seemed to get in the groove, did he, Cowboy? No, it just didn't seem as though he had whether it be the, the right mental framework or if it was just he was feeling for release point, but it, it just never seemed as though he got it going in the right direction. And you're gonna have those days. Yeah. Yeah. And a third but foul. Yeah. Two and two. Josh Smith, two effective innings of relief with three strikeouts, did allow one hit, no runs. And Morris benefiting from the great play by Holt in center, escaped in the seventh. This one hit deep to left. Back is Duval looking up, forget it. That's going to be about 20 rows deep. And it's a 5 1 lead for Oakland. Valencia's 10th homer and 24th run knocked in on the season. Throwing a cutter or a slider on every pitch. The hitter is going to look out over the plate. He has nothing to worry about with you coming inside. And when you spin one that stays in the middle, that happens. There's Davis bounced into a double play, single to center, and struck out. Yonder Alonso on deck. Big swing from the Oakland left fielder. And it's one and one. That was a great analogy. Softball swing. He'll unload it, won't he? That's what he looks like. Just trying to hit it over the, over the fence on every swing. There is no two strike approach. One and two. And he got it. Strikeout number one for Morris since he has come into the game. And here's on Yonder Alonzo up for the first time today. There are some hitters, and you don't have to throw them a strike. And that's one of them. Talked a lot about Dan Straley pitching against his former team. Yonder Alonso coming back to this ballpark, always very special. Drafted by the Reds, came up with the Reds, and has kept contact with some of his former teammates. Daddy now got a baby, pretty happy about that. Guy who emigrated from Cuba. His sister married to Manny Machado, so they'll produce some pretty good. Bloodline athletes, huh? 
I would think. One ball, one strike. And you mentioned Selsky, and if you look at their minor league careers, they both came along pretty similar fashion, and they both are similar kinds of hitters. Two and one. Also has the ability to make some pretty good contact. He's going to give you normally a pretty good at bat. And there's some young players that get to the major leagues without a sense of what it takes to be a major leaguer. He's one that was on the accelerated path, both as a high school player and then at the University of Miami. First time you talked to him, you knew he had he got it. About the news, Francisco Cervelli out for six to eight weeks. Broken bone in his hand. So the Pirates lose a guy who is as critical as anybody they have on their roster. He's not just a great catcher, but a leader in that clubhouse, too. Yeah, and especially with that pitching staff, looks like Garrett Cole is having some issues as well. But they do have Jameson Tyone, who we saw come up and pitch one game and Tyler Glass now both of those guys have been awfully good in Triple A. That'll sneak its way through into the outfield so Yonder Alonzo picks up a hit in his first at bat today. I would imagine over the years George that the Stevenson Reed combo will lock horns with the glass now tie on. That's a good point. Yeah. As we move along. I mean, we're in the same division. It'll be an exciting time. Those guys have pitched against each other with Pirates in Indianapolis and the Reds in Louisville this year. Of course, you're not always, well, you're really not pitching against the opposing pitcher. It's just a familiar name. You're pitching against the lineup that that pitcher has on the field that day. Lonzo down at first. Here's Simeon, his two run homer in the second start of the Oakland scoring on the day. Came after a Butler single. Following that, Fegley singled and Smolinski homered, and the A's had a 4 0 lead early. Hit by Alonzo, his fifth of this series. Two hits in each of the first two games. Ripped into left. Duval will try to cut it off. He will. That'll hold the runner at second. Good job by Duval. And what looked like it was heading into a second and third situation with one out. Adam Duval cuts it at the edge of the warning track and holds the runners to first and second, so the double play is still in order. You almost expect a great play from Duval and a techni technically correct play every time the ball's hit out there. I mean, he's just become that good. And this is a guy Man. that played shortstop and third base, not only in college, but throughout the Giants system. And the Reds put him in left field, hoping that he can handle it because of the power in his bat. And I said it the other day, I've been just as impressed by his defensive play as I have with, with his ability to drive the baseball. And you look at the first two plus months of the season, he's been the Reds' best player, both sides of the ball. You know, a big fella, but still able to have quickness and speed, and he may have the best left field arm in the league. Well, here's Fegley. Single, a walk, a fly ball out. Foul. 
out for strike one. The Reds got a ground ball double play to get out of trouble in the first. A line drive double play to get out of a two on base situation in the third. They could use another one here. says uh uh didn't go around. In the air to center, hold back tracking. Tagging it second, going to third will be Alonzo, so it'll be first and third with two away. And here comes Malinsky, one for three, the big two run homer in the second. Looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth, Votto, Phillips, and Bruce do up. The road gets steeper after the leadoff home run by Valencia here in the eighth. Third, that'll go foul. When we head to Atlanta tomorrow, it'll be Daniel Wright against Aaron Blair. Daniel Wright will get the start in place of the normal starter, the big pasta. What have you seen from Daniel Wright so far? I like his changeup. I think he should use it more, and I think it plays better for him in the rotation than it does out of the bullpen. He's got a good breaking ball, but his his arm action on the changeup really plays into a rotation spot. And the kid's not scared. He's going to throw strikes. He's coming right at you. Not going to try to dance around the strike zone. Strike one delivery misses one and one. I think pitching out of the bullpen for Daniel Wright makes him go away from his changeup a little bit. And I think in the rotation, he uses it a lot more when he starts. A little low, and it's two and one. The Reds rebuilding their rotation. Certainly, the Atlanta Braves you put in the same category. A host of young pitchers coming through their pipeline that they hope will be ready in the next couple of years. There goes the runner. Here's a bouncer down to third. Suarez has it, and that'll take care of the inning. But a leadoff homer by Valencia gives the A's a four run lead. Here comes Joey.
Bush early in the game. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Uh, you don't get tired of seeing this no matter how time how many times you see it 1990 when the Reds swept the A's with the World Series championship. Billy Hatcher all he did was hit 750 Cowboy <laughs> not bad huh. It's amazing watching that tape there you see him spin on a ball that's down and in but he stayed nice and short waited a long time the very second uh, at bat that we saw in that video he shoots it down the right field line I'm being able to spray the ball around especially on that turf. That's how you get it done they had a great NLCS to boot and it's 750 in the World Series here's Sean Doolittle who takes over in the eighth. Left. Face Votto. Left hander has only allowed one earned run in his last 14 appearances. This is his 30th appearance for the A's in 16. Votto 0 for 2 against him in their previous matchups. Saved three of the four games he's been called upon to save a game. His 30th game of the season. Joey tries to hold up on that swing. For a while there, he was the A's closer. Mm -hmm. Appeared in the game on Friday night. First time the Reds have seen him. That was back in 2013. That's way high. And as you can see, some giddy up on his fastball. Votto, Phillips, Bruce here in the eighth. Two balls, two strikes, no shift against Joey here. You got him. You got to like a guy that comes into the ball game out of your bullpen, highly aggressive, believes in his stuff, and says, Here it is. See if you can hit that. I mean, there was no dancing around for Sean Doolittle in that at bat. And there really, there really isn't ever when this kid comes into the ball game. Well, here's Brandon. One for three, single to right in the third. He hit a hard line drive against Rodriguez in the fifth, but it was right at the center fielder, facing Doolittle for the first time. And when I say dancing around, I'm talking about coming into the ball game. You're throwing the ball 95 miles an hour, and you're trying to hit. A dime on the outside corner, and then you miss, and then you try to hit it again, and you miss. Then it's two and zero, oh, and you throw it right down the heart of the plate, and they knock the thing about 400 miles. The element of surprise is on your side if you're aggressive in the strike zone and down. Things you look at when you look at a bullpen. At first, a manager wants to know your matchups, your individual matchups, either the individual pitcher to player or lefty righty. And Doolittle's exceptional 184 opponents batting average, 128 against lefties, 229 against righties. Exceptional. And there are some lefties that can get righties out, some righties that can get lefties out. They're the most valuable bullpenners, that, so you don't have to use that second left-hander. But there's a there's a presence and a persona when you come into the ball game, and that hitter knows it. Dribble to the right side, the race to first, and they'll beat Phillips two away. Don't forget coming up after today's ball game and after every ball game it's Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda a complete recap of the game interviews in the locker room a whole lot more and we'll be looking ahead to the four game series in Atlanta we will be with you tomorrow with the Reds Live at 630 both Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and then on Thursday on your original schedule we weren't scheduled to do that we will be doing that game so Reds Live will be on at 1130 for a 1210 start. It's going to be smoking at 1210 in Atlanta. It's going to be warm. You know, I go back to watching a guy like Sean Doolittle come into the ball game. It's kind of like a fight. 
you punch the guy in the mouth do you back up and wait for him to punch you no you keep right on pounding Here's Jay facing this lefty for the first time. Bruce today, you see those 0 for 3 numbers, struck out looking and hit a hard line drive to the shortstop. Simeon, who was right behind the second base bag, and he turned that into a double play. They overshift against him with no one on here in the eighth. So when you're aggressive on the mound, that pitch was just a little bit off the outside corner. But when you're aggressive, you're working quick and you are coming after the hitter. More times than not, you're going to get a swing on that pitch. I pop up behind home plate. It'll be out of play. You don't see any him hawing around on the mound. It's get the baseball. I'm coming after you. And what it does is it turns up the intensity for the hitter. So all of a sudden the hitters guys saying all right I got to get ready I got to get ready he's going to have a tendency to swing at more borderline pitches. High fastball Doolittle strikes out two. We're going to the ninth the Reds trailing five one. has been brought to you by Kroger. Stop by your neighborhood Kroger to save big store wide great food low prices all at Kroger and by Toyota for over 30 offers visit by Toyota.com Toyota let's go places. Three home runs by the A's 12 hits all told they lead the Reds five to one as we head to the ninth inning here at Great American Ballpark. Got a moment to update you on college baseball activity today. As we told you earlier in a shocking loss down in Louisville UCSB came back with four runs to win it four to three on a walk off grand slam home run after Louisville led the game three to nothing so Louisville eliminated by UCSB Miami won the, the game today by a final score of nine to four in the top of the third. You see those two games still underway. All part of the race to Omaha in the College World Series. Here's J.C. Ramirez, the fourth Reds pitcher. If you joined us late, John Lamb. Four innings, seven hits, four runs, a strikeout, two left. Hard hit ground ball to short. Cozart has it. Muncie hitting in the pitcher's spot grounds out. There's one away here in the ninth. Back to the top of the order. The switch hitting Coco Chris will face the big right hander. Lamb, Smith, Morris, now Ramirez here in the ninth.
Coco in that 0 for 4 robbed of a hit on a nice play by Suarez. Back in the fourth. Under the glove of Ramirez into center field, and that's his first hit of the day. Coco's on with one out here in the ninth. As you look to the bottom of the ninth, Duval, Suarez, then the pitcher spot due up for the Reds who trail by four. By the way, great here at Great American Ballpark today. Tommy Brenneman stopped by. It was good to see him, wasn't it? Yes, He's it was. doing well, feeling well, and yes, well, you look great. On the road to recovery. We'll look forward to getting him back in the booth whenever he's ready. Got to talk to him a little bit. Spirits high, looks great. Yep. Feels great. Can't wait to get him back. Thank God for modern medicine. Got that right. Here's Lowry hitting in the number two spot. He's two for four. Singled in the first. Lined out, flied out. And it went into the alley in right center that Tyler Holt gloved and threw him out trying to stretch one into two. This will drop for a hit. So a three hit day for Jed Lowry two on here in the ninth with one out and here's Valencia. Hey your best bat flip could be your ticket to the MLB All Star game in San Diego. Post a video of your bat flip to at Fox Sports with hashtag Fox bat flip contest now through June the 26th. Visit Fox Sports dot com slash bat flip contest for more info. Hard to believe it was a year ago that the Reds were preparing for the All Star game. What a special moment. I mean, you talk about the All Star appearances, the postseason appearances, an All Star game. Very special for I think, I think it was a phenomenal way the huh. city collectively came together, the businesses along with the Reds, and just the way the, the presentation was to the, the national audience. I, I just don't know that anyone has done it better. I still get people coming up to me from Major League Baseball that came here and hadn't been here or hadn't been here in a long time. And they were just amazed by the ballpark, by the downtown area, by how welcoming people were helping them during that three, four, five day period here. It was a neat time and you couldn't ask for more. The home run derby, sir, was a high point of the year, not just the week. Line drive right field in the seats. We well, have had people that didn't even get to get into the ballpark mm -hmm. that said it was the most fun they've ever had in their life. I mean that that just tells you something about the extracurricular activities that were going on outside of the ballpark and all through downtown. And they made the fan fest inclusionary and there's a swing and a miss. Valencia did get a piece of it. 0 and 2. And San Diego will go through the same feeling, although a little different city, a little different layout. I would imagine that as time goes on, there will be teams looking back to the Reds to figure out exactly how they got it done. Yep. I mean, every city is different, every city brings challenges. I mean, here, Everything was in the downtown area, which is great. San Diego will be spread out a little more. Here's another look at the strikeout for Ramirez up and in and above the strike zone. So two away, and here comes Davis. Davis, two strikeouts, a single, and a ground ball double play. Straight away in the infield, straight away in the outfield for this big swinger. <laughs> and he's still swinging big. That pitch was up and about a foot outside, and he 
He's still stepping towards third to try to hook it out of the park. Lined into center. Here comes Holt charging. Here comes the runner around third. Throw all the way to the plate. Will not be in time. And there'll be runners at first and third. The Oakland A's play add on in the ninth inning. Now lead it six to one on the base hit by Davis. His 37th run batted into the season. Fastball down and away. And this time Davis puts a pretty good swing on it. And I'm not sure that Tyler Holt could have gotten the base runner even with a perfect throw. No. The two outs, runners moving on to contact. The Cruz scores. Lowry goes to third, and Davis is on at first. And here's Yonder Alonso, second at bat of the day. Bouncer down to Phillips. They'll take the out at second. The last round up for the Reds. Big hill to climb. They trail by five. Duval will lead it off. Second drive of the game. The A's took their lead back in the second inning. Marcus Simeon, a two run home run after a Butler single made it 2 nothing Oakland, followed by a Smolinski homer that made it 2 nothing after a Fegley single. And that gave the A's the lead that they have right now. Simeon showed us his glove in this series, and you know, talking to Ron Washington, the third base coach for. The A's, one of the best infield coaches in baseball today, Cowboy. He, you know, he told us that this young man's getting better and better each day, and we've seen him get better each day of the series. That's all you can ask for. Well, here's a familiar face in still another uniform, and finally he gets to pitch at Great America Ballpark, Ryan Matson. The yeah, Reds signed him for the 2012 season. Had to have uh, Tommy John again. And he's finally making his first appearance in 2016 at this ballpark. Threw one ball game in 2013, didn't pitch at all in 2014, had to have another surgery. Pitched awfully well for Kansas City last year. Madsen came in. The Reds had hoped he'd be a major part of their bullpen. He went down in spring training before the season ever started and underwent surgery. It is amazing, though. You sign a guy that long ago, 2012. You think some somehow he'll pitch that year, and he makes an appearance for an opposing team four years later. Madsen this year, 12 saves and 14 opportunities. Ball right down Broadway and Duval just a bit tardy. 
mean, injuries can hit anywhere, but certainly when you shell out 13, 14 million dollars for a pitcher and that pitcher goes down, especially for a small market team, it really hurts. It hurts. Duval strikes out 0 for 4 today. Here's Suarez, bounced out, walked, hit by a pitch. Now the Reds' bats have been quiet today. Oakland's have finally come alive. But the bottom line, the Reds have taken another series, two out of three against this Oakland team. And they've taken three of the last four series. Three out of four against Oakland, two out of three against Washington, and then two out of three here. And they head to Atlanta for a four game set, and Houston and Anaheim. And the old time baseball guy said just keep winning two out of three. <laughs> you don't need 10 game win streaks. You get back in them. There's a swing and a miss. So this bullpen has powered its way into the ninth inning. Second strikeout for Mad Madsen. Another change up. This one down and away. You can see the side spin on the baseball. But the release point and the motion to the plate looks just like that 96 mile an hour heater he threw on the first pitch. Nine red strikeouts on this day, two away, and here's Ivan De Jesus Jr. pinch hitting in the pitcher's spot. You don't see too many closers throwing a changeup as their out pitch out of the bullpen. The Matson's is so good, and he can throw it on both sides of the plate. It looks like two different pitches. And he had it when he threw 94 95. Yes. And it's just gotten better now when it's become his go to pitch. He's still got some giddy up on that fastball as well. When he comes in to righties and away from lefties, he's got that dive to it. When he goes down and away from righties, he keeps a stiff wrist and it stays it's true down and away. No balls, two strikes. Six runs, 15 hits, eight left on for Oakland. One run, seven hits, six left on for the Reds in an errorless ball game today. One time that was. What you saw from Madsen pitch after pitch. Big fastball. Now they become a different pitcher, more effective pitcher with that changeup. Just hanging in as you bind to Jesus Jr. He went upstairs with a 97 mile an hour fastball to change the eye level of De Jesus. He comes back with that changeup. He starts it right in the middle of the plate. And as De Jesus starts to swing, the ball just Dips down, the bottom falls out of it. For the A's, they'll be glad to leave the road and head home. They take on Texas beginning tomorrow, and then Anaheim comes in, and then the Milwaukee Brewers will come in. This will be their second win in the month of June. And for them, it will end a seven game losing streak and a nine game losing streak on the road. The A's swung the bats today and they add on runs at the end of the ball game. So we'll go full three two to Ivan de Jesus. Kendall Graveman started four innings seven hits a run. Rodriguez. Axford Doolittle now Matson. That is second Lowry will take care of it and that'll do it. 
Now the big right hander comes in to close it out and for the Oakland A's they end their long road losing streak for Bob Melvin he comes home with a victory he'll wave across to his longtime friend Brian Price as the A's will leave town and head home after a rough road trip but they'll take the final game of the road trip a 6 1 victory over the Reds whole lot more to talk about Reds live coming up next on Fox Sports Ohio.